Uh, welcome. We are going to be, this is Devin, we're going to be talking about my personal favorite episode of the Dante Graves Show. I sometimes flip-flop on what my favorite episode actually is, but I think I always find myself coming back to this one as the one that I hold in the highest regard, or at least the one that my friends and I like to rewatch the most. It was the one that I had some of the most fun making and some of the most fun experiences doing. But this is my audio commentary for uh, Horror of Dr. Arachnoid. So let's begin in three, two, one. So this opening scene here, we've got uh, my good friend Cody playing Dr. Albert Arachnoid in his human form. This was filmed, uh, this is the first thing we filmed. And I guess the concept for this movie was I was watching The Fly. And the most the, the Vincent Price version, not the Jeff Goldblum one. And the the most disturbing scene of that film is when the fly is getting eaten by the spider. And I'm like, imagine how fucking scary it'd be if a like mad scientist turned himself into like a human spider hybrid. And I also just really thought that playing the fly character would be really really fun. So I wrote this role um, as like something that I could do. Uh, initially, Cody was going to play the character the whole way through, but I have the the most, I have the best like body double for him, and he's not really available a whole lot because he's like at college and stuff. So he played the human version, and then I took over for the rest of the film as the spider version. Uh, lymphomatoid papulosis is a illness that you can get from being stung by scorpions. We looked up like just some random bullshit fucking thing. Just to have as the illness. That's like a Nokia phone that was just in this basement. This was my friend Mason's basement. His dad was not home at the time. So we just completely trashed this basement over like one weekend making this. Uh, and this fish tank was just like, that was like just like a goofy fucking Halloween spider. But I was like, hey, can I break that? And he's like, yeah. So we broke it. Um, and this scene was just so much fun to film. There's like eight other dudes in this room with us. Just like all throwing in their two cents and making it even funnier. So I really had a lot of fun filming this scene. Obviously, the syringe is empty. But see, I love that this one's just like a B-monster movie, like sci-fi creature feature type thing. That's kind of like what I wanted to go for. The vial of like the fluid, that is orange Gatorade and Tabasco sauce because I wanted Cody to actually be disgusted while drinking it. And he was. It was very fucking gross. And it, it left this like cinnamony scent for like days and that's why there's this kind of joke in the movie but like that scent got like in the costume and we never cleaned this room i don't know if mason ever did but um yeah it was just like a house that we could use so but it was like it was the summer it was like middle of july and it was so hot and the house smelled like cinnamon and everyone was just sleeping over and we were making this and it was just so much fun to do these were just like monster hands I found. I know some people say they look like werewolf hands, but like spiders are really hairy. So I always thought like Dr. Arachno would be kind of a hairy guy. Uh, the mask we used, there it is. That's the only shot where Cody plays Dr. Arachno. Everything else was me. Um, mask we used was a mask that was, I think it's literally called Arachnoid Mask. And it's from uh, Trick or Treat Studios. It's a really awesome, just like original mask they did. And you can't see diddly dog dick out of it. And especially wearing it in like 90 plus degree weather is fucking terrible. And it's super hard to take on and off because it's very snug fitting. So like, I basically, since I was also both directing, playing Dante and playing Dr. Ragnarok, I was having to like yell really loudly through the mask directions. And that's why this movie is just so sloppily directed. But I think it works because it's such a terrible movie, but like intentionally so. You know, this was an abandoned Gordman's and the guy getting killed here is Dagan. This was the first film he was ever involved with, but he was a co-worker of mine from across the street from this Gordman's at J. Seating Hobby. And I just like one day, I, it was actually, I had suggested to him that he play Dr. Albert Arachnoid, but then um, when we got there, Cody was able to show up because I did not think Cody was going to come. So I was like, okay, well, my backup is Dagan can be Dr. Arachnoid. Um, and he was going to just be like the human version and I would yet again play the spider version, but then Cody showed up. So then Dagan was still there. So I'm like, Hey, do you want to just get killed? So then we filmed his death scene there. And then he would go on to later become like my primary cameraman for like most movies going forward after this. Uh, the yellow Hawaiian shirt is the, the, one of the lesser favorites of mine, but it felt summery. And this was like a very, like kind of hot, sweaty movie. So I wanted to have that summer vibe in there. Um, you gotta mix it up. You can't always wear the black or the blue one. 
Um, these little bits here, initially, so we, we filmed all of, like, the arachnoid scenes. And I put them together, and I'm like, okay, this movie makes no fucking sense at all. Because this had a very slim script. There was no dialogue written beforehand. It was all improv. Like, every bit of it. Um, even the, the opening with Albert was, like, improv. We just, like, made it up as we were standing there. And so... I put the movie together and it didn't make any sense thematically. And granted, none of the Dante Grave show makes much sense, but it needs to at least like kind of seem like we attempted to have a fluid narrative. So instead, what we did was um, I had written extra scenes where Dante and Barry would be like discussing and putting the whole case together and they'd bring out the map and like find where the barn is and like all this stuff. And I'm like, once we put the movie together, it was like 45 minutes would be how long it was. And at the time, that was, like, very long for a Dante Graves episode. So I was like, okay, let's fucking dial it back. And in, in one evening, I sat here and filmed all of the Dante stuff in the office of Dante Graves' apartment. And then, yeah, and th this garden spider footage, um, Dr. Arachnoid isn't a garden spider. He's a Hagna giant wolf spider. Um, if you look up what those are, they bear a striking resemblance to him. And he also, I, I wrote the character to behave like how a spider would if it suddenly became human-shaped. And I really like spiders, and I'm really interested in them as animals. So I tried to kind of infuse as much of that in the performance as possible. And I'll get into a little bit more, that more later. But the garden spider footage we just threw in there because I wanted to have like a kind of all sort of spiders represented. And that footage was just taken from a YouTube video. I wish I would have credited the person. I think I do in the credits, but... Uh, just public domain footage, so I used it. Um, but yeah, it was really good footage, too, so uh, thank you to whoever made that. Um, my friend Mason's working the camera here. This is before the days of Dagan being the exclusive cameraman. Um, you can see this scene. I am so sweaty. It's so hot. Like, in like the, the hotter it gets, you get down to the basement, and it's like you're just suffocating in heat. And yeah, I... This scene also is what I think attributes most of the length to the movie. But I think it's important because it establishes quite a few things. Um, one is Dante Graves is actually somewhat of a competent detective. Or at least like he's, he's very eccentric and his methods are very stupid and dumb. But he does technically yield successful results. Um, and that's kind of always been something that was I was thought was important to have with the character. Um, I also wanted Dante and Barry to have a more defined relationship in this movie. So we had to get over the fact that in the previous movie, they both tried to kill one another. And in the movie before that, Dante tried to kill Barry. Um, and also the sword, just for a bit of continuity. And in the book, Dante did carry around a samurai sword just because he thought it was cool, but he had no idea how to use it. Um, there's the Tabasco sauce and the orange juice, actually, on the counter there. I've never noticed that until right now. Um, but no, I was just like, I wanted to show him like doing some investigating and also show Dante and Barry are capable under extenuating circumstances of actually working together. Um, my hair was cut for this movie like a week before and I fucking hate how it looks, but I'm willing to overlook it in favor of the fact that I had such a good time making this one. Um, that fridge legitimately smelled awful. Um, so when I said the food's all old, I mean, it wasn't as old as I say it is, but there was like two or three things that had to have been expired in there because it was fucking rank. Um, yeah, check in the trash can. I just, you know... It's like it seemed like something a detective would do. So I just wanted to kind of really let the, the scene breathe. Not everything has to be go, 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 you know. And just kind of investigating an old house, which isn't that old. But like just a house that looks, you know, in universe, Dr. Arachnoid lived here. And so you kind of like look around the house and put together some things about his backstory. Apparently he was a Star Wars fan because there is a BB-8 on the ground. I hated Barry's shirt in this film. I was insistent he wear plaid, but Zach said it was just way too hot. And I think he was probably right about that. But uh, I really don't like Barry wearing a shirt that looks like something Dante would wear. Because then they just don't really seem that different. But yeah, there's BB-8 on the ground. So I guess Dr. Ackman is a Star Wars fan. Um, and also, we wanted to amend the fact that uh, Barry is a trained or ex-trained police officer. And Dante is just some fucking guy. So in a real fight, Barry should pretty swiftly defeat Dante Graves. And so he does in this scene. Um, like I said, this was all improv, so, like, it might seem stilted, because it is, and the, I'm not saying this film's a fucking tour de force masterpiece, but I do like how well, just, like, the, 
run and gun filmmaking served us because we just slapped this together in such a short amount of time. But it was a pretty lengthy episode, and it was a pretty memorable episode. And I, I, I also I think more towards the like the latter half of the film, there's just a lot of scenes that I had so much fun doing with the friends that I was doing them with, and I'll go into those when they show up. But this scene specifically, like. People tell me a lot, and I don't like to suck my own dick because, like, you know, a lot of people tell me that my shit's terrible, and I don't like to talk about it because it hurts my feelings, obviously. But a lot of people, I remember messaging me after I put this one out, and they had, like, seen the first couple, and they were like, eh, this is kind of whatever. And this was the episode where people were really like, okay, I get what you're doing here. It's like a Monster of the Week thing, you know, goofy, not really supposed to think about where the cameraman and how they're getting these this footage and just kind of have fun with whatever goofy bullshit subgenre of horror we're experimenting with that episode. That's kind of what the purpose of the show is. So this is where I think the show really came to its own and where the main characters really started to gel with one another. Um, like I said, this basement was so hot. I And I tried my best not to complain, but fuck, it was goddamn sweaty. The spider webs. This was a reference to the fact that in Carver's Revenge, the one set in the high school... Dante Graves was afraid to touch the spider web, and I was going to try and make it that Dante Graves had a fear of spiders. Um, but the thing is, I'm not scared of spiders, and I accidentally, in a lot of episodes, when I see spiders, I just get actually excited, and I break character, which is unfortunate. So, um, he does have other phobias, which we will get into eventually, because there he's not just completely fearless when it comes to any foe. There are things that Dante Graves is scared of. But um, I think that was just kind of a nod to the fact that he might have thought it was gross to touch the spider web, so he didn't. Um, and that made a reason for them to have to walk clear around the basement to this other side and like check the washer and dryer and all that stuff, just to kind of give them some fun and goofy detective work to do and some dialogue. You can kind of get to know them a bit more. Um, this kind of stuff's important, even though it's not necessarily like the most fun thing to watch all the time, but it makes the fun stuff that much more fun because you care about the characters you're with. Whether or not I succeeded in making you care about these people is up for debate, obviously. But um, I tried my best. It's it's the uh, the effort that counts. Or, or really, it's not. It's it's what uh, the finished product is what counts. But that's what I was trying to do with this scene, is all I'm trying to say. Um, like I said, this was Mason's Basement. But Dr. Ackman apparently also owns a GameCube. So he had a bunch of stuff down here. And just totes and Halloween decorations. Um, this was also... A, a lot of this movie was shot in Des Moines. But... Like, in-universe, Dr. Arachnoid, they never really state that they've left Adair County, which is where Dante Graves is kind of, like, centralized. Like, any town that's in Adair County is, like, his jurisdiction. But he, I guess he is also willing to go up to Des Moines and take a look at whatever the fuck was going on up here. Um, yeah, and this was, like, the next day, and all this shit was just still sitting here. So, like, it was just a happy accident, we just improv the whole fucking thing. Um... And this, I, like, just saw the phone there. I'm like, oh, that'd be a great way for them to find out what his fucking plan was. But, like, I didn't write that in the script. It's just, like I said, a happy accident. Like, so much went right with this movie when there was just so little planning beforehand. With the Dr. Arachnoid sequel, I'm trying to put a lot more work into making the flow of the plot and the way the characters gel together with the villain make a lot more sense and be more precise. But I think for a movie that was just thrown together, it gels together quite nicely. Uh, like I said, the spider, I just found it. And I, if Dante Graves is afraid of spiders, he wouldn't have fucking touched that. Um, yeah, look how sweaty I am. I've gotten so much worse. The uh, sp Spider of Abraham, the idea was we always knew we were going to make sequels to Dr. Agnon. It was never going to be a one-off thing. Um, but we always wanted Abraham to like get bigger throughout the movies. But in filming this scene... We realized how difficult it really is to work with a, just like a Halloween decoration of a spider. But, um, yeah, and also there was this, like, little subplot in the early episodes where Barry would never let Dante take a gun anywhere. So, like, him finding a gun, that was kind of like, okay, he's got a gun now. But then in the book, Dante already had a gun, and so he, you don't actually see Dante's primary weapon until, like, the fifth or sixth episode, I'm pretty sure, uh, with the vampire. That was kind of when he started actually using the gun that he was using in the book. These were just papers that were laying down there. They don't actually say anything about spider mutation, obviously. There's Abraham, just grown slightly bigger. Um, yeah, but people really find this fucking scene funny, and I... 
I did we like we knew it was like it was supposed to be funny. We weren't trying to play this for serious horror, but I didn't realize that people would find it this funny. Like whenever I show this people, they were fucking rolling around the ground laughing, and I'm like, it's just two guys being scared of a spider. So to me, it's kind of like lowbrow comedy, but that's kind of what we do. We do a lot of things that are just lowbrow in general, especially some shit that's later in this movie. It's just super like lowbrow, um, but that's kind of the business that I'm in. Um, the footage, the mic cutting out. This is still, like, very early on when we just got this new camera. We had no idea how to use it yet. So the footage was, like, or not the footage, but the mic, we were just so loud, it was, like, cutting the audio out. But it made for a very, like, frenetic scene, and it comes off. The, the found footage elements of the show really shine through in this scene. Um, the logistics of getting the spider up in the ceiling was also really difficult because we had so many different ideas of how it was going to happen. Eventually, I just said, okay, fuck it, just throw it to Zach, and then he'll throw it to me. Um, but yeah, I just found this crutch. Like there's just so much shit that I'm like, I didn't intend for that to be in there, but it was, it was just going with the flow. And it was, a, it was a crew that were all dedicated to making the goofiest monster movie possible. And it really just worked. Um, the spider webs got on Barry because he ran through them. Some people were confused as to how he got spider web on him. But yeah, and the spider webs were also because Abraham had been just chilling at the house for like a week. Just going around webbing shit up. So people were also confused about, like, what did Dr. Arachno come back and, like, jizz all over everything? And also, speaking of jizz, how does Dr. Arachnoid produce webs to then get on Barbara? I think it is jizz. I haven't quite decided because that would be really gross. But I don't think it comes out of his ass. And I don't think he shoots it out of his wrists like Tobey Maguire. So it probably is jizz. That would be the only thing that about makes sense. Um, but Abraham just produced regular... Spiderweb. Um, this scene, Mason is just sitting in the back, and I felt like we needed some kind of like closure to the scene we were just in. That also continues to establish Dante and Barry's relationship. So I was like, okay, just film us driving around, and we'll have a conversation, and I'll cut out all the stuff that I don't want in it. So we're just driving around downtown Des Moines, and there's this homeless guy right to the corner, and then Mason like slumped down in the back seat because he didn't want him to see him. Um, real goofy stuff. My air conditioner wasn't working, so it was just really hot in the car also. And... But yeah, we just felt like we needed to acknowledge that Dante and Barry are starting to get along. Because the last time you saw them, it was like he pulled a gun on him, and he fucking stone-cold stunnered him, and it was just all sorts of shit. So we knew from the very beginning that they would eventually start working together. And just in this episode, I felt like it was time to start that relationship. Because they can't just be enemies forever. Um, and we just, we want to establish that they are argumentative and have two different points of view of looking at problems and solutions. So, and also that they have different expertise in different matters. Um, it's not so much that they like hate each other. It's just that they are, they, they don't mix well, but they yield very good results when it comes to like investigations of the supernatural variety and stuff like that. So, and they're, and they're both, like, at one point, Dante Graves was a private investigator when in the Carver's Revenge thing he shows up and he's, like, Detective Graves. And then Barry was an actual detective that then became a private investigator, and then Dante became a TV show personality. So, like, they have a lot more in common than they really would like to admit, I feel. Uh, and maybe I'm just reading too much into dog shit YouTube videos that I make, but, like, that's kind of how I've always looked at it, is that they, they're just... Two sides of the same coin, you know? Um, as I was driving, I just got, like, lost. And it, you can see, like, just that beautiful summer sunset. Um, granted, it doesn't look that beautiful in the video, but, like, I really feel that the summer vibe shined through. And I put the whole movie on this science fiction filter, and it just, I don't know. I, I really like the atmosphere of this movie. Um See, movies, like, never, just because a movie doesn't have, like, a specific atmosphere that you can, like, point out, like, all movies have some atmosphere, and I just like the one that this gives me. It just brings back fuzzy memories for me. Maybe that's just me, but, I mean, this video is very successful. Um, it's the highest rated Dante Graves episode of all time, for a reason that I will get into later. But, um, I do think that it's not entirely just because of a couple seconds of the film. I think it is, like, people generally just kind of like this one. Um... I love all the nighttime stuff. We're officially now back in Adair County. So I think Dante Graves went back there and Dr. Acknoy just, I guess, floated back there. But that, that last scene was shot in like the parking lot of Flick's Brewhouse. 
This is my friend Kay Lee, once again in these movies, except this time playing a very different character. This is Vanessa Bellamy. This entire scene was initially just going to be I needed another death scene in the movie. And she came over, and I was pitching her ideas for like what I wanted, and her and I, like on the drive to, this was filmed in Creston, which is about 20 minutes away from Greenfield, and this is actually the town where Zach lives, who would be where Barry lives. Um, and so we were driving up there, and I said I really wanted like a Regina George type character, and she's a huge Mean Girls fan, so we're spitballing ideas back and forth. And we had picked out the costume, and then it was like, when we were sitting at my house beforehand trying to write this scene, uh, we went out there to film it, and she was just going to die. Like, there was going to be nothing else. And then this scene was had to be filmed in two nights because people kept fucking with us the first night. So much so that her camera and all that stuff eventually died. And we had to go back and, like, recharge cameras. So we came back the next night, and as I had put the footage together, about to the point where she takes kicks off the heels and runs away... I, like, told her about it, and I'm like, I kind of actually like this character of Vanessa, and she was sort of having fun playing her. The, the pissing of the pants thing, we just thought was something that would reasonably happen if you saw a fucking mutant spider guy in a lab coat in, like, a dark alleyway. Um, and also just kind of like that classic 50s movie trope of, like, pretty girl being chased by a grotesque man, you know? Like, it's um, a tale as old as time, as they say, that old chestnut, you know? Uh, but yeah, the kicking off of the heels, this was had to be shot twice because the first time it was just way too blurry. Um, but then this was like the second night. And I said, what if we leave her alive and she tells Dante about Dr. Arachner and then we can use her for something else. And initially Vanessa was going to be built up as just this super unlikable bitch that you wanted to see die so bad. And then eventually she would get some horrific death. But now we've grown to just like the character's presence in these so much that we, uh, while I still may kill her eventually, I think everybody, even Dante himself, is open to being killed. Um, we just haven't quite found where we're going to do that yet because she's so much fun to use in the movies. Um, and also just Kaylee plays her really well. Because she's basically like, Kaylee is nothing like Vanessa in real life, but she has seen movies like Mean Girls enough to like kind of emulate that performance. Um, this scene, uh, I've heard a lot of people ask me, like, why did he rip off her skirt? Well, for one, uh, it's funny. Two, it's sex appeal. And three, uh, we're trying to kind of insinuate that Dr. Arachnoid is sort of a sexual driven creature. Um, so, and we wanted it to seem, we didn't want it to come off gratuitous. We wanted it to just come off as like a, you know, a comedic slapstick gag. But then he's so, like, distracted by the skirt and finds the bubble gum and all that kind of stuff. I just felt like it was kind of a cool thing. And the twitching of the hands and the way that he, like, combs his hair back, it's really trying to kind of, or at least what we attempted to do was say that he's, like, in love with Vanessa. And then, um, and it was also, it was, was not going to be her skirt originally. When Kaylee and I were sitting there writing it, um, I was like, what if you wore, like, a jacket? And Kaylee was like, it's really fucking hot. And I'm like, okay. I'm like, well, what if it was, like, a light jacket? And she's like, I don't even own a jacket. I'm like, what do you want to do? And she's like, what if he rips off my skirt? And I'm like, that's a great idea. I'm all for it. So that's what eventually happened. And it was difficult to film because while we were out there, uh, we went really far outside of town to this, like, railroad to do that scene. But even then, there was, like, trucks driving by, and people would stop, and they would hear me explaining the scene to her, and yell, like, catcall her while I'm fucking there. When, like, we're so far out of town, but, like, we just needed to get, like, a quick scene of something. And it just, people would just bother you and say the fucking most weird shit. And being a guy, I don't have to put up with that fucking bullshit, but, like, it was really fucking gross. But Kaylee, just, like like a champ took it in stride and just laughed it off and thankfully like we were both there together to laugh about it together but like it was a weird fucking night of filming and i think it produced a pretty memorable scene this is my girlfriend brie uh playing the character of barbara goodhead whose name is a james bond reference to the film moonraker um this scene was initially longer but i just felt uh no shame or shade thrown at brie but her performance was very stilted and it was her first thing ever in any video ever. And that's probably my fault as a director, because I'm just used to people being able to just kind of go with the flow. But Brie is incredibly shy, and she didn't like how it looked, and I didn't like how it looked. So we just went to, like, 
you seeing the direct aftermath of him having taken her. But again, it's that like Beauty and the Beast uh, creature wants beautiful women thing. And I'm lucky enough to be graced with many beautiful women in my life that uh, are cool enough to put themselves out there and want to be in these movies and be supportive of my work. And they also really enjoy doing it. Um, I also am graced with a beautiful friend like Zach, who's going to grace himself. This is the first time you really get a good look at Dr. Rackman. And I love this scene. Um, however, it was like 103 fucking degrees, and I was going to die. And I'm also, it's I was trying to wear dress socks the rest of the movie, because he's like a scientist. But in this one scene, I'm wearing Scooby-Doo socks, and you can tell. And so that was annoying. Both these scenes were filmed in the same day, and I'm pretty sure we filmed this first. And I was still really sweaty, so you can see how sweaty I am now. Now imagine I put all the Dr. Rachmanite shit on afterwards, and it was fucking horrible. Um, again, I was trying to kind of sell that Dante Graves was scared of spiders, but I really wasn't bothered by these. I was just trying to, like, include more spiders in the movie, and also, I thought it was funny that Barry was, like, getting the shit kicked out of him by this monster, and Dante's just, like, fucking around, doing nothing. Um, had this shovel here. I, I really just wanted, like, a down and dirty fight, but we also wanted to depict Dr. Rackner as being dangerous to a grown man as well, not just, like, sneaking up on everybody and, like, killing him, you know? Um, he needed to seem like he could handle himself. And we might see a lot more of that in the sequel. Uh, he's also just a, a super fun character to play, even though it's it's like agony to do it when it's so hot out. I just love the little mannerisms I gave him. And I feel like you really can't... As I'm not trying to like uh, cover up my own flaws. I really don't feel like you can tell that this guy on screen is the same guy playing the spider guy. A lot of my friends who like know me personally could not even tell that it wasn't Cody doing it the rest of the time. So I was really proud of that actually as a performer that I was able to mask myself that well. Um, the, the fight itself, I think is just long enough. I think the Dante stuff goes a little bit too long, but I just wanted to pace the movie out more and also just show Dante finding Barbara, who's a character that would then become important later. Um, this is a barn that I used, just used to play in as a kid and we used it again in the Christmas special. But yeah, and then, so yeah, she's all webbed up and I was thinking like she's probably like paralyzed with like spider toxin so that she can't move and it would also make it so that it's an easier role for Brie to play because she doesn't have to do really any acting other than be unconscious. Um, so I was trying to keep it as easy on her as possible because she was not wanting to do this. I basically begged her to do it. And yeah. Um, and that mask is so cushioned. I could just get kicked in the face all day long, which reminds me during the scene with Vanessa, Kaylee barefoot fucking waffle stomped me right in the fucking nose and like drew blood. Uh, when she kicked me in the nose, but it was uh, such a good scene. I was so happy with how it turned out. But that mask, like, it really does protect your face. You can just take all kinds of crazy hits with it. It's a very good mask. I, I recommend anybody who likes it buy it because um, it's like the single most iconic image from this film. But I was just trying to give the movie like more like also like that dusty web, hot and sweaty kind of feel. And so, like, the barn, I felt like it was a really nice setting for that. I love Dr. Arachnoid running away from the gun. It's, like, the second that his opponent is all of a sudden armed, he turns into this just complete coward and goes and, like, hides in the trees, I guess. Um, it felt like it was in character for him. Um, right there, I, like, actually just hit my head, and I thought it was funny, so we left it in. I, I forgot how low that thing sat there. Uh, yeah, use these trees again in the Christmas special, but to very different effect. Um, they, they're just... Really cool trees at my grandparents' house, and I used to play in them a lot as a kid, and I just love how, like, maze-like they are, so you can really have a villain hiding anywhere, you know? Um, right here, you get a good look at my girlfriend's ass, so you're welcome, but it's all for me. And then this ending scene, a lot of people have taken umbrage with. This doctor actor runs out and just fucking gets iced. And it was more just like... That was basically always how I had planned for him to die, but I think it's more just the abruptness of, like, that's the ending of the movie. Because people did really dislike the ending. And I, I initially I was like, what? Because I, I liked how abrupt it was. Like, that was kind of what I always intended. And the movie had already gone, like, so long over, I didn't think it felt like it needed any sort of epilogue. Like, girl is saved, 
Killers Dead, Dante and Barry have worked together successfully. Like, I felt like that was, like, end of mission, you know? But uh, I do think it was a valid criticism after the fact because just so many people felt it. I'm like, well, I must have just been wrong, you know? Um, so the next time, we're going to definitely make it have a lot more of a, a spice to it. I, I noticed in the last movie, my end credits, I misspelled Kaylee's name, her last name, Carlton. I always forget there's, like, an E in there. But, um, yeah, her as Vanessa Bellamy was great. Mason, a uh, guy who got yanked out of a car and eaten by Dr. Ackman, played Brad. And that was supposed to be Vanessa's boyfriend, and that's why he didn't show up. But some people didn't really realize that. But that's fine. I didn't do a good, good enough job communicating it. Song at the end here is uh, Dust by Moon. It's obviously in the end credits. But unfortunately, this movie, because I used so much copyrighted music, I... It got struck for copyright, and I can't use additional like shit. Um, I can't I can't monetize the video, which is unfortunate. So I'm gonna definitely make another one, and this time make it all in house music, so I could actually, if if I was ever to turn a profit off of one of these, this would be the one that would be closest to it, because it cracked like a thousand views because people really like looking at my friend Kaylee's ass, and that's fine. That's why it's in there. Um, but yeah, that was Horror of Dr. Arachnoid. I appreciate you watching my commentary track. Uh, more of them coming soon. Also, stay tuned on the channel if you like the video. Subscribe to it. And we got Return of Dr. Arachnoid coming this February. So uh, I'm really excited for you guys to see that. And I appreciate you watching the movie. Let me know in the comments below whatever you want to tell me. I love to hear from you guys.